ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد as muslims alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to recognize him his book the final revelation and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to a type of worship that is done by no other except for the muslims who believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the salah that we pray five times a day and within the salah if you're at least praying your obligatory rak'at which is 17 rak'at throughout the day fajr dhuhr asr maghrib isha all together is 17 rak'at even if you don't pray any of the sunnah prayers or the nafl prayers you'll still be saying ihdinas sirat al mustaqim 17 times guide us to the to the straight path 17 times you are asking allah for huda for the guidance 17 times every single day this sirat al mustaqim the straight path is that which leads to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the only way you can attain paradise look at this hadith that's collected in the musnad of ahmed in ad darimi and imam al nasai sunan al kubra it's narrated by abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu he said khatta rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khattan bi yadihi one day he was gathered with the companions he drew a straight line on the sand he drew a straight line with his hand thumma qala hadha sabilullah mustaqima and he said this is allah's straight path this is sirat al mustaqim thumma khatta khututan an yaminihi wa shimalihi then he made a bunch of lines from that straight line to the right many lines to the right and many lines to the left thumma qal hadhihi subul then he said these are various paths many paths sabil is singular when he drew that straight line he said hadha sabilullah singular when he drew all these other paths he's saying these are various paths wa laysa minha wa laysa minha sabilun illa alayhi shaytanun yad'u ilayhi and there is not a single path from all these various paths that i've drawn except that there is a shaitan sitting on every single one of these paths yad'u ilayhi calling people to that path the path of allah is one the path of the shaitan is many because shaitan can come to people and misguide them in many ways we mentioned this i think last week or the week before every single one of us has a weakness iblis knows that weakness and there is a devil sitting in every path of misguidance calling you to that path with the weakness that you have whatever it is that you are attracted to 
Whatever it is that you are thinking, whatever it is that you are craving for, all these other paths take you away from Allah's path. And there is a shaitan sitting in every path, convincing you, come here, come here, come here. Thumma qara'a, and then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, after drawing all these lines, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the ayah from Surah Al-An'am. وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُرُ This is a statement from Allah. Indeed, this is my straight path, singular. فَاتَّبِعُوهُ So follow it. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُرُ And do not follow other paths, plural. You have to understand this. 17 times a day, you are having a conversation with Allah in your salah. And you're asking Allah, guide me to the straight path, singular. Throughout the Qur'an, you will never ever find Allah talking about His path in plural form. Every time it is mentioned what path leads to Him, it is always singular. But when he mentions paths that misguide, these are, you know, numerous paths. You can't put a number to it because there's literally thousands, hundreds of thousands of different paths that lead you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think back, how many religions are there in this world? Sure, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism might be the major religions. But there's literally over a thousand religions in this dunya. Bani Adam has more than a thousand religions. Only one of them is correct. Only one of them. And if you have doubts about this, you need to renew your shahada. If anyone doubts whether Islam is the right religion or not, you have doubts. You're not a proper Muslim. Inside. The munafiqun came, they prayed with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they fasted, they did all these things, but inside they did not believe in Islam. So people can do many things externally, but what is inside your heart? You have to have iman. Multiple times Allah said, you have iman, walam yartabu. After having the iman, you cannot have any doubt whatsoever about what the straight path is about what the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You can't have doubts. Because many people, they think, you know, they have these uh, uh, discussions. Al-hiwaru bayna adiyan. You see these in Muslim countries now. They got it from the Western Muslims and now it went to the Muslim countries. You know, these interfaith discussions, we're all looking for God. You have one way, I got one way, it's, it's okay, we're all looking for God. What is the God of the Christians? Is Jesus your God? Is Maryam your God? Why do you think the Christian is worshipping your God? What about the Yahud? They reject the messengers. Is that your religion? How about the Hindus? They're deifying animals. Is that your God? So this is a confusion that many Muslims have. All religions are not looking for Allah. There is only one deen. Inna deena inda Allahil Islam. Indeed, the religion with Allah is Islam. This is the straight path. There is no other paths that lead to Allah. Everybody's searching for God. No, if you're looking for God, this is the only path that Allah accepts. He speaks in the singular tense throughout the Quran. And this is the responsibility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He guides whomever He wishes, He misguides whomever He wishes. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ قَصْدٌ سَبِيلٍ وَمِنْهَا جَائِرٍ It is upon Allah. The direction of guidance is with Allah. It is upon Allah to clarify, to show that straight path. And from those paths come various other paths. وَلَوْ شَاءَ لَهَدَاكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ If Allah wanted, He could have guided every single person. 
But Allah does whatever He wants. And no one can question Him, no one can stop Him. It is from Allah's infinite wisdom why He does not just guide everybody like that. Because life is a, is a test. He tests you. He tests me. He tests all of human beings. You have to strive and find the path of Allah. The keys are there. The Quran is there. The guidance of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is there. Everything is there. But the person has to find it. That is, that is his or her life journey. You have to strive and come to the conclusion that Allah is one. And this revelation is his final revelation. This book is perfect. His final messenger. You have to accept him and follow him. And understand what he said. And what he did not say. What he did and what he did not do. And then you look at those companions. About whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. When this ayah was revealed, who was with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Me and you? No. When Allah sent down, you are the best people ever to be resurrected. Who was listening to this ayah? Who is the kuntum? You. Who's the you? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Fatima, Aisha, and everyone else, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. These were the people that were there listening to this verse that you people, your ummah, you are the best of the people. And one of the conditions why you are so best, ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna anil munkar. You command what is good and you forbid what is evil. This was the characteristics of the Sahaba. You look at the previous religions, and we have a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari mentioning this. The Jews also have the stoning of the zani or zaniya, the married. At-tayyibu zani specifically, that's what it means. The one who has tasted marriage. Man or woman doesn't matter. Musa alayhi salam, it's in the Old Testament. Musa alayhi salam himself stoned adulterers. This is in the Bible. The same law got carried on to Islam. A married man or married woman who fornicates by the Islamic State, by the government, not me and you, not random people don't do that. The government imply, applies the hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not random people. The law, the authority. What did the Yahud used to do? If a noble person committed this crime, they would hide the ruling. If a poor person, insignificant person who doesn't have family status, who's, who's not known, then they will apply this law. And the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. And there are other hadith in Bukhari. The Prophet said, even if my daughter Fatima steals, I will cut her hand off. There is no nepotism in Islam. Even if the daughter of Rasulullah committed a crime, she would face the hudud of Allah. That's the justice and the fairness of Islam. And that is what we have to live by. We have to understand these structures and these systems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. This is the straight path. Many times we hear things and we're hunting, hunting for different ideas, hunting for different opinions. We try to run from Sirat al Mustaqim. Because what we hear, what we heard, what we saw from the ayah, what we saw in the hadith, maybe we're struggling. It's okay. Say that I'm struggling to implement this, no problem. But do not arrogantly run away from it. The hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who has kibir, arrogance, even equal to a mustard seed weight, in his heart. He's not going to enter paradise. The Sahaba got so worried. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, we all like to wear nice clothes. We all like to eat nice food. We all like to wear nice shoes. They got so worried that is this arrogance? That we're wearing fine clothes and eating fine food? No, this is the rizq from Allah. If you have halal rizq, enjoy it with you and your family. No problem. 
The Prophet said, no, that's not kibir. Kibir is batarul haq wa ghamtun nas. Arrogance is to turn away from the truth when it comes to you and to look down on people. Iblis turned away from the truth when Allah told him, make a sajda to Adam. Allah gave him the command, Iblis turned away. Allah told him how much Adam salam, is honored. Iblis looked down on Adam. I'm created from fire, he's created from mud. I'm not going to make sujood to him, sajda to him. Arrogance is the sin of Iblis. He turned away from the truth and he looked down on a different creation of Allah. That is the meaning of kibir. When a hadith comes to you, when an ayah comes to you, don't turn away. Say that I need some time to implement it. No problem. Ask Allah, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Mean it from the bottom of your heart when you are saying this 17 times a day. But if you are arrogant and looking for excuses to run away from it, Allah will misguide you further and further and further because He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your heart. Many times we say, you know, it's uh, the same excuse. I saw, I heard, I saw, I did. I'll give one example because of course we don't have a lot of time. Let's say in our region, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, right? How many Muslims are there? You have 200 million Muslims in India, 240 in Pakistan, and 150 in Bangladesh. 590 million Muslims. 590 million Muslims. And I hope the sisters, you're listening to this carefully because it's about you. 590 million Muslims in these three countries. 80 to 90% of the masajid in these three countries do not have a space for women. They do not have a space for women. Are 500 million Muslims wrong? Why are women here downstairs? Why do your masajid allow women to come here? You grew up seeing and hearing that it is haram for women to come to the masjid. 500 million Muslims are wrong? How does it sound when I talk like this? That is not dalil. If your Islam is based on, I heard, I saw, I grew up, don't bring your wife and daughter to the masjid from tomorrow. If that is Islam for you. Because 500 million Muslims believe it is haram for women to come to the masjid. But why do we allow women to come? Because there is a hadith that is muttafaqun alayhi, the highest level of authenticity. A hadith that is collected in both Bukhari and Muslim and agreed upon by Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تمنعوا إماء الله مساجد الله إذا استأذنوكم When the women ask you to come to the masajid of Allah, do not prevent them. That's Islam. That is Sirat al Mustaqim. Not what you heard, what you saw, and what you grew up doing. Just like this, I can give you 50 other examples. We follow the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We follow the ayat of Allah. Because if you believe your Islam is based on what you grew up doing, I just gave you a very big example that you cannot run out of. Why do you do it? Because there is a hadith. Because the Prophet ﷺ commanded, لا تمنعوا, Do not forbid. This was a command from Rasulullah. ﷺ. So, even sisters, when you argue, you may hear a hadith for the first time. Remember this example. You are already establishing in your masjid something that was not done, is not done by 500 million Muslims. So why are you afraid of implementing other things in the masjid that 500 million Muslims don't do? Sirat al-Mustaqim. All these other paths, there is a shaitan sitting there calling you away from it. Sirat al-Mustaqim. You have to have iman in Allah. You have to have iman in the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
People, a group of people, a nation, a village, a town is not an evidence. The evidence is with Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you are living by it. You're already doing it. Why do you let the shaitan stop you from doing other things exactly in this same manner? That's the question I want you to go home today with. Why am I doing one thing that 500 million people don't do? How am I able to follow a hadith that 500 million Muslims don't follow? If you have the courage, bi'idnillah, and the thabat, the steadfastness to do this, you can do many other good things too. You have to believe in Allah. You have to wish to follow Allah's path. And Allah will give you that courage. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us in the Quran من اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه whoever receives the guidance whoever understands the straight path the receives the huda from Allah he is guided لنفسه, for his own benefit. If you receive the huda and you follow it, you understand it and you work hard to follow it, you are benefiting yourself because you are the one who will enjoy the paradise after death. وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا And whoever is misguided, you're misguided because of your own mistakes. Your own mistakes. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى And Allah does not burden one person with the sins of another person. And this is very important for us as Muslims to understand. We come, every single one of us, if you're 20 years old, you experience certain things in life in those 20 years. If you're 40 years old, you have more experiences. If you're 60 years old, you have a little bit more experience. You, ma you meet various kinds of people. Various kinds of people. Maybe I go somewhere, a person, I don't know, I'm, I meet somebody from China. And he did something terrible to me. The natural reaction of the human being, what do they think? All these Chinese people, man. I'm never going to trust another Chinese in my life. But it was only one guy who did this to you. Allah is saying to us, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى He does not hold accountable one person for the mistakes of another person. This is our Lord. This is our Lord. Why do you behave like this with each other? Somebody did something to you. It has nothing to do with me. It wasn't me. Somebody did something to me. I can't look at you that same way. It wasn't you who did this to me. If you are paranoid like this, you need therapy. You need help. Not every individual is the same. There are many people whose goal in life, they don't care about anything except the tawheed of Allah and the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Whether people are there or not there, they don't care. Then there are people who are afraid. Any new person they meet, oh no, this, somebody from his background did something to me. Somebody who looks like him did something to me. I'm going to paint everyone with the same brush. That is not Sirat al Mustaqim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do that. If Allah was unjust like that, none of us would go to Jannah. None of us. Because there are sinners in every group. Right? So remember, because if you behave like this, you will push people away. And the Prophet said in another hadith, Muttafaqun alayhi, wa yassira. وَلَا تُعَسِّرَ وَبَشِّرَ وَلَا تُنَفِّرَ Be easy with the people. Do not be difficult. Give them the good news and do not push them away. This is a command from Allah. If you are paranoid like this, you will push people away from you. It's not the teachers who push people away. It's the people within themselves. I'll give one example. Some sisters came, I didn't mention this for the past eight months, but today I can mention it. There's a group of sisters who left this masjid. And till now, even I told my wife to talk to them, they didn't come back. Do you know why they left? 
They came in the beginning. When I'm giving the lectures, when I'm giving the khutab, a bunch of other women were talking. They got so annoyed, it's like, we can't even learn anything here. But the Sheikh's videos are online. You know what? Let's leave. It's been six months since they left. They never came back to this masjid. The Imam did not throw them away. The Imam did not push them away. The Awam pushed them away. Be very careful, brothers and sisters. As an imam, as a person of knowledge, whatever Allah has given me, I have to advise you and warn you. We are struggling in this area. You all came from different masajid. You saw a new masjid. You, may Allah protect this masjid and put barakah in it. You wanted a fresh start. Every single one of you came from a masjid with problems. We want to keep this as a safe place without problems. We should not say things, we should not do things that will push people away. Where are you going to go? Allah forbid if there's ever problems in this masjid, which masjid can you run to? You already came here because you want to learn. We have to remember this with each other. Every woman has to remember this with her sister sitting next to her. Every man who's sitting here, you have to remember this with the brother next to you. Don't say anything that will push the people away. There is no other masjid that people can go to. Wallahi, when I came back in March, some of the brothers were saying, Jazakallah khair, akhi, for coming back. We had to drive to Camden and Philadelphia to hear Sunnah Khutab. We can't do that every week. Alhamdulillah, we come here to learn the Sunnah. We can hear the Sunnah. Make things easy for the people. Everybody is looking to please Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're here to learn. We're here to implement to the best of our ability. Don't say anything to each other that will push them away. This masjid inshallah is open for everyone. Anyone who wants to learn, come here. This is why these brothers made it. And I want to reiterate this point. Inshallah ta'ala, this masjid is for everyone. You want to learn, come. If you are confused about anything, ask me. If you hear something in the khutbah, you need a little bit you want me to speak to you in Urdu or Bengali? Let's have a private sit down. No problem. I can explain something to you two, three, four times. No problem. But we want to have a friendly atmosphere. We're all brothers. We're all sisters. We're all trying to find Sirat al Mustaqim. It's not about what we did in our countries, what we grew up. I gave you one example. We, we want to learn and find Sirat al Mustaqim. We don't want the problems that we saw before. In 30, 40 years, 20 years, whatever it is, may Allah protect this masjid. And I'm going to continue making this dua. We want everyone, please tell this to everybody. This masjid is open for everyone. We're not going to discriminate. But the condition is, I will not teach shirk and bid'ah. That's my condition. And I will never, ever bend for anybody. That's my condition. That's it. So if you want to learn tawheed sunnah, we're here for you. Let's do things together. Mistakes will happen. Don't worry about it. But if you grab the mistake immediately, inshallah, shaitan will not make it bigger than what it is. Right? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all to the sirat al-mustaqeem. May Allah unite our hearts based on the Quran and the sunnah, the interpretations of the sahaba.